mental toughness. With Winston, how impressed are you by the fact that here's a guy who went through a whole hell of a lot of field last year, yet he continued to play a pretty high caliber of football, particularly in the second half? But uh, yeah, he has. He he played through a lot of adversity. It's pretty uh, it's a pretty impressive trait. Clutch you know, did a lot of good things uh, when he had a lot going on in his life. Uh, Jason, let's say there's a tie. You love you once player X, you want player Y. You're both adamant. You're both pounding the table. Who breaks the tie? Brian Glazer? <laughs> Move to the next player. I'll go back on Logan Mankins a little bit. You said you had to talk with him and he wants to be back. Uh, you know, some people who had the, the feeling that watching him play last year, he didn't really want to be there. But no, you he never got that feeling, did you? Not at all. I have a great relationship with him. He's uh, he's texts back and forth. He's very excited. He says he's never started training this early. And he's very excited about, you know, the future here and what he can bring for the Bucs. Back to the quarterbacks a little bit. You know, you saw Jacksonville take a quarterback in the top three, and they didn't start him right away. Do you see a shift of the league going more towards that and, and being able to kind of bring these up the right way? Or do you feel like if you take a guy first overall, he's got to start? No, I think it's every situation's different. Every quarterback's different. Some are more advanced than others in terms of their mental, uh, mentally ahead of the game where they you, you can go ahead and play them. Some, some quarterbacks need a little bit more time. So Aaron Rodgers benefited from having a lot of time, but then you know other quarterbacks played right away and, and did okay too. So it's all individual individual basis. Jason, when people hear off the field about Winston, they, they think about the things he's been accused of or the stuff he did at Florida State. But do you see anything that makes you think you'd have to babysit the guy? Is a guy that's going to go out a lot? He's not going to be serious about it? I mean, I think sometimes people link him with other quarterbacks that have had those issues. What, what did you find as far as? Um, well, it goes back to what I was asked a second ago. He feel real comfortable about it. Yeah. Um, he's, uh, yeah, he's, we've done a lot of work on him, just like a lot of other players. So right. it's not going to single him out. But right. he's very, uh, he's a football junkie. So he likes being around the office, and he's not. I don't think you have to worry um, as much as what people think. You know, when you were in Arizona, you guys weren't afraid to take a, a risk on, on some of those guys that did have off-the-field issues like Teron Matthew. What made you comfortable about taking a guy like him? Was it the fact that, you know, he had already kind of had a mentor on the team with Peterson, knowing that, you know, he would be okay? Or, or you know, what, what, gave, what gave you that level of comfort that, you know, you could take a guy like that? That helped. But I think the bottom line with all players that have uh, some concerns, um, you have to figure out whether it, the guy's a bad person or just immature person. And there's a big difference. Um, you, there's concerns with both, but um, see at the core uh, what the person's like. Now, we haven't even talked to Winston yet, and we will when we're here, but um, we haven't even had an opportunity to meet him just by league rules until the combine. So, um, you know, it seems a little bit talking a little bit too much in excess of these guys when we haven't even talked to him yet. So. For a guy like Tyron Matthew, you know, what enabled him to have a successful year? Was it just having that, that you know, mentor? Very competitive, very uh, wanted to win more than anything, and was actually a very good person. Just had made some, you know, mistakes in his life, but was willing to put everything into football. How much influence or weight? You got someone like Derek Brooks, pillar of character, obviously, you know, Hall of Famer with the Bucks. He goes out publicly and says, hey, I know Winston, I can vouch for him. How much influence or weight does that carry? Well, I, Derek and I have developed a relationship, and Derek and Lovey are very, very close. Uh, I think the world of Derek. So, you know, when he says something, I'll listen. Same thing with Tony Dungy, though. I mean, he strongly endorsed, endorsed Marcus Mariota. That's it. Yep. There's, it's all resources that we're going to be using in the next two plus months to make the decision. You look at the franchise tag and you debate where to use it or not use it. How much does the player's reaction to possibly being tagged factor in that, or does it at all? Um, a little bit, I suppose. We haven't been in that situation, so um, I haven't seen it yet here. So um, I don't think they necessarily like it, but um, you know, they most of them know that that's just part of price of doing business. Trying to do the best what's for the club. Have you turned a page on Adrian Claiborne? Um, not going to talk about him right now. Um, you know, he's still he's UFA. Uh, we have a lot of decisions we have to make with a lot of our players. Jason, have you uh, you going to try to reduce Vincent Jackson's contract? Is that a negotiation you're going to try to have in some way? Or you know, that's you have yeah, to move him where he's at. If if we have conversations, I'll probably keep those between us. Um, you know, it's not anything we've. Uh, on to them with yet. Would you see him being a part of this team going forward? Absolutely. Do you think he's somebody you need? Really like Vincent Jackson.